maybe you can kind of explain, you know, the, the, the pyramid and some of the, uh, some of the things you look at at each, at each uh, part of the pyramid. Yeah, for sure. So, so this is kind of my, my layout for, for principles of athletic development. And I can't take credit for, for all of this because, you know, the, the four principles inside the pyramid are for sure bills. Um, like those are, I remember having a conversation with him probably two years ago now where he like, I think it was probably halfway through like an hour conversation we had. He was just like, these are, this is kind of the, the way that you organize these things. I think we were talking about one athlete in particular who was on a return to play. Um, and so it was just like, you know, this guy needs to be able to accept force. He needs to be able to create force and then create force quickly and then create force quickly repeatedly. And so that's, that's how you bring somebody back um, kind of post injury, especially when, you know, I was dealing with somebody at the time, it, I was a really young coach and, and dealing with somebody who was a pretty high level athlete who had a knee injury. And so I was like, I don't know how this process should go um, because, you know, outside of, you know, the treatment he was getting from Bill, I was it. Um, I was doing all of his other stuff. So sure. I, uh, at the time, you know, I drew a pyramid like this and there were, you know, maybe half the bullet points that are on there now. And the bullet points are, uh, either qualities that I think exist inside each of, of those, you know, four categories, or they are strategies for, for accomplishing something within that category. Um, and so, you know, these are, these vary wildly based on the archetype that you're looking at or, or the, the presentation that you're working with. Um, but I find them kind of true. And these are true in my setting. Obviously there are people outside of, outside of IFAS that have resources to things that, you know, I probably can't even pronounce. And so they're going to have different things listed on this. But I think, you know, for me in my setting, these are the things that work for me. Um, and, and this is how I view it. And so the base here is accepting force. I think that is, um, that's the prerequisite for me in terms of athletic development for everything. Um, if you're not able to, to level change in an appropriate way, you're not able to land in an appropriate way, decelerate in an appropriate way. You're not going to have, you're not going to have kind of the appropriate steps on top of that to, to get to where you would like to go. And so that really, um, that really becomes heavy in the training that I do with somebody early on uh, kind of across the board. And I think that those things probably always exist in the training that I do. Um, it's just to what degree do they dominate the program? So if I have somebody who comes in, you know, like you said, who is a young athlete who can't accept force well at all, that becomes probably the majority of the training that I'm doing with them is it, something to help them be able to, you know, limit how low they go, uh, in a landing or, or you know, limit how long they spend on the ground during a change of direction. Um, or on the, I mean, on the other end of that, there's also kids who, who, you know, don't spend enough time on something like that. We can get into that later, but, um, you know, how do they interact with the ground is probably my primary concern before I move on to anything else. And so that's why I did something like this. I wanted to be able to lay out something that I thought was clean and, and helpful for me in terms of decision-making going forward to be able to say, you know, these qualities are checked off. It might've taken up 75% of the program at first. Now it's just something we have to revisit maybe once or twice a week to be able to, to make sure that the quality that we're doing at that level is high and we can continue to move forward. So a little bit of a hierarchy for me in terms of what I'm looking for and what direction I want to take somebody when I'm working with them. So th this will be for any, any sport, um, uh, regardless anybody, anybody. Right. yeah i work with you know i work with some of the you know one of the best pitchers in baseball right now and he does um you know he uh, the decision making for him for me comes from from this layout so right. um it does it really does not doesn't matter the level of athlete that you're working with it doesn't really matter it, athlete in general um this is this is kind of the the for me, the layout of things moving forward for a person who, who is uh, having 
any type of training going forward. So how, 